Hey everyone, so here's an interesting question in front of you. Uh, those of you who haven't tried the, this question, I would strongly suggest to pause the video, try the question once and then resume to see the solution. Okay. Okay. So as far as this question is concerned, um, first of all, I'm going to take a guess and tell you uh, what is the answer that you might have marked. Okay. So what I believe is that uh, those of you have tried the question about 60 to 70 percent, at least 60 to 70 percent of you might have ended up marking the answer as option D, right? If you think that you've marked this answer and this is correct, then let me tell you, uh, unfortunately, this is not the correct answer. Okay, and 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 the purpose of this question is to tell you a very very common mistake, a common mistake known as double counting, which is made by students. Okay, so this is the purpose of giving this question to tell you what is double counting, why do you make this mistake, and how to avoid it. However, uh, to talk about double counting uh, using this question would be slightly difficult uh, because there are three sections, four questions in each. So to show you double counting would be. Uh, taking a lot of scenarios, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very simple question. Okay, I'm going to simplify this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to consider just two sections first. Okay, I'll come to this question. Don't worry, but I want to simplify this to help you understand first. I'm going to take two sections and I'm going to assume that there are only two questions in each section. Okay, um, let's name these two questions. Let's call this question A and B. And let's say there are two questions here, C and D. Okay, two questions here, two questions here. Okay, and now let me ask you a question. The question what I'm asking is that you need to select three questions. Okay, out of these two sections, you need to select three questions and you need to select at least one question from each section. So you can see it's a similar scenario, similar to the question that has been given. The only difference is now there are two sections, two questions. You need to select three and one from each. Now, let me tell you how the method that you would have used to solve the question. What you will do is you need at least one. So you must have, you will take one question from this section. You'll write it as 2C1. Then you'll take one question from this section. You'll write it as 2C1. Okay. So you have got two questions uh, out of the total four questions, two plus two equal to four. You have already taken two. How many are left? You're left with two questions. How many more do you need? You need one more question right out of those two so you'll end up writing 2c1 and you'll say the answer is 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8 right you must you'll, you you know, you must have solved the, this question also in the same way the way i've showed you you will take one question first from each section and then the remaining question from whatever is uh, whatever questions are left if you have done this this is incorrect and let me show you how and why let's write down all these cases eight cases okay now, let me do this step by step. The first step is I have to choose one question, right, from section one. Let me choose the question as say I'm choosing A. Okay. Now I'm choosing one question 2C1 from section two. So let me choose C. Okay. Now I need to choose one question from uh, 2C1 from either of these two sections, right? So there are two possibilities, right? I can choose either B. Okay. Or what I can do is I have A and C and I choose D. Right. Another possibility is when I'm choosing 2C1, I could have chosen A here. And when I'm choosing 2C1, instead of choosing C, I've chosen D. Okay. Now, again, while choosing 2C1, either I can choose AB or after choosing A and D, if I, when I'm choosing 2C1, I take C. Okay. Now, notice here, when I do this, the scenario two and scenario four, they are exactly the same. The only difference is if you write it in this way, you are considering the order of choosing, which is not required. Okay. When you say two C1, I'm choosing one out of the two section, then you're choosing A in this way. Okay. When you're saying two C1, you're choosing C and D in this way. I haven't written the rest of the four cases. If I write them down, you'll be able to see that another possibility is when you're saying two C1 is you have chosen B, right? Two C1 means either A or B, right? So you have taken all the cases of A. Now you'll come with the cases of B. So you've chosen B. Two C1 means uh, you're choosing either C or D. So let's say you have chosen C. Once again, 
these are the scenarios that are possible B A C or B C D or you initially must have chosen B and D so B A D or B D C I have written down all the eight cases but notice carefully that this case and this case is the same order does not matter right you're choosing questions you need three questions this and this are the same notice a b d and b a d does not matter what order you choose but they are the same so these two are same again a b c b a c they are the same two different cases considered uh, two same cases considered twice okay so you can notice and here also these two cases are the same so here if you write it in this way 2c1 times 2c1 times 2c1 you are considering the order of choosing that means either you're choosing a first then b first when this 2c1 means you're choosing c first then d first and once again 2c1 means you're choosing the third one first or second so the order uh, so the order comes into picture uh, because of which you get the incorrect answer and I hope you have understood why this is incorrect because you need you need only four cases here. The case are A, B, C, A, C, D. Okay, then you can take A, B, D. Okay, then you can also take uh, B, C, D. So these are the only four cases that you need to take uh, and that's it. So I hope you have understood why this is incorrect. Now let's talk how you should solve this question properly. Now, whenever you have a scenario where there is at least an at most, it is better to create scenarios first. Now, what do I mean by scenarios? Now, in this question, you had two sections, right? And you need three questions. So what, what you could have done is you could have first written down all the possible scenarios. You should have said, okay, you have said, okay, uh, I can choose two questions from here, one question from here, or I can choose one question from here, two questions from here, and there are no other possibilities. I cannot take three, zero, or zero, three because these two scenarios are forbidden because I need at least one from each. Once you have written down these scenarios, then only you calculate. So there are two questions here. You're choosing two. So you'll say 2C2 and so the, that will, the multiplication sign will come and you need one question from section 2. So 2 out of 1. So from 2, you need to choose 1. So 2C2 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So you'll get 2. Similarly here in this scenario, you're choosing one question from section one and two questions from section two. So you'll get two times one is equal to two. And either this scenario will happen or this scenario will happen. So you need to add these two scenarios and say there are four possible cases. So what is the learning from this question? The learning from this question is that whenever you have an at least at most scenario, do not choose whatever is needed first and then find out the remaining. Because in that case, you're considering the order which you don't want. So the best way to solve at least at most and these kind of questions where there are two different groups with some constraint is write down how the grouping is done first. So this way, like write two, one, so one group, one, two is another group and then find out the way to select it because then you'll get the correct answer. Okay. Now let's solve the question that was given to us. Now, once we know uh, what we need to do, this question become uh, really easy. So there are three sections, section one, section two, section three okay we need to choose total eight questions so you should write that down you need eight questions okay and each section has four questions so that is also which is something which you need to jot down okay the constraint is that you need at least two from each of them so you need two from each of them right but you need eight questions if you take two from each you are only uh, taking six questions so there are still remaining two questions right now, how in uh, how can you distribute this? Well, you can distribute the remaining two questions this way. See, you have four questions here, right? So one way is you take four questions from here, two from here, two from here, right? The other way is to take two from here, four from here, two from here, or two, two, four. The other way is that you take these two questions, uh, one each from each of the sections. So what I mean by that is you take three, three, two, right? or 3, 2, 3, or 2, 3, 3. Okay. Now, there are no other possibilities of distributing these two. Either you give it to one section or you split it between two sections. So, these are the six possible ways of, of uh, uh, selecting the uh, qu questions from each section. But this is not it. You need to actually find out the number of ways in which you can select it. Okay. Now, 
once again you don't don't need to do all the calculation just do it for one of them because see when the number of ways of choosing 422 two from section 123 is going to be the same as 242 now you can choose four questions out of four and four c four ways you can choose two questions out of uh, four and four c two ways and four c two ways so four c four is one four c two is six four c two is six so you'll get thirty six now in these three and these remaining two scenarios are also the same so here also you'll get thirty six here also you'll get thirty six right now in this case you're choosing three questions out of four three questions out of four and two questions out of four which will give you four times four times six which is equal to 96 and obviously this will also be 96 this will also be 96 so if i add it up i can say i'm getting 36 times 3 plus 96 times 3 and you can take 3 common okay and say this is equal to uh 132 or if i have to show it to you this is nothing but 36 plus 96 okay uh which is equal to 3 times 132 which is equal to 396 and hence the correct answer is option b so you, I hope you can understand and appreciate uh, the, this method and, and I hope you can understand how double counting um, can end up uh, uh, giving you a very huge big answer which is incorrect. Okay, there are just 396 unique cases of choosing it. But since um, you solved this question and I'll tell you how you must have done it, you, uh, you did it in this way, 4C2 times 4C2 times 4C2, right? You chose two questions from each of them, okay? So out of 12, you chose six, and from the remaining, you chose uh, the remaining two, and you wrote it like this, right? And and that is why you got a very huge incorrect answer because there were multiple countings, uh, multiple cases taken, which were incorrect. So the final learning, final takeaway is that always create cases. Whenever you have an at least at most scenario, whenever there are two or more groups in from which you need to choose decide the uh, decide how many you are taking exactly from each of them the way that i've written four two two three three two write these cases then find out the number of ways of do, um, selecting those number of entities that we have done it and add them up okay because in this case we had to add because these are all independent scenarios so i hope this is perfectly clear now how you can avoid double counting in questions like these